Alright guys, well next up we're going to be checking out the ASRock Z490 Extreme 4. So if you're wanting to make a move to this new platform with the Intel Comet Lake CPUs, this board is more of an affordable option to get you there. As a result there are a few features here which are omitted, but it should still be a decent board. Extreme 4 comes with a mixture of USB 3.2 including a Type-C header for the front panel, 2.5 gig ethernet around the back and twin PCI Express driven M.2 slots for fast SSD storage. And much like other boards there is hardware support for PCI Express 4 when there is a CPU equipped with it. This board is available to buy now, it has a price tag of 185 in the US, 187 in the UK and then 379 in Australia. So while it isn't the cheapest out there, it does sit inside that low price bracket for Z490 chipset. So if you're looking to save a bit of cash, maybe this is a good option for you guys to consider. Before we begin, today's video is brought to you by Be Quiet and their PureBase 500DX. This mid-tower is designed and optimized for high airflow with its high airflow intake front panel and top cover. It comes armed with triple Pure Wings 2 140mm cooling fans and it lays out some useful features for system builders such as USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C on the front panel and enough space for 360mm radiators, large CPU coolers and high-performance graphics cards. 500DX is also available in black or white giving you that ability to match it up with your configuration and office space. For more info on the PureBase 500DX please check out that link in the description. Alrighty well this is the packaging that Extreme 4 arrives in, love that neon theme. Got a handle at the top, over on the back we have all of the significant features all of which we're going to take a look at as we go into our review. Inside the box we first of all have all of the accessories. We have a bunch of documentation, a postcard, the quick installation guide, that's the user manual really with all the details in it, a quick setup guide for the software and then the driver CD with a badge. We get four SATA cables, some cable ties and those screws there for the M.2 and underneath all those parts we have the board there in the anti-static bag and with foam around the edges. Okay, so here is Extreme 4. This board is quite a departure from predecessor versions of the 4. ASRock has chosen to go for a black and grey theme, with the PCB adding in a bit of blue. I'm not a huge fan of the styling on this. My own personal opinion is that the black and gold theme that we saw on the Z170 Extreme 4 was by far the best design they've used. Nevertheless, this design here should match up well with other hardware. ASRock has given Extreme 4 integrated RGB lighting, which involves that Z490 heatsink, the rear panel cover and the edge of the board and that can be modified using the polychrome software. In terms of the size Extreme 4 fits into the ATX form factor but do bear in mind that the far edge of the board has no standoff holes so when you are installing the board make sure that you support it from the underside and while the shape of the PCB may look stylish it is short sighted to compromise in this area. So we'll begin at the CPU socket which is of course LGA1200. So this is a new socket designed for 10th gen CPUs. Now while this is a new socket, the alignment holes for the coolers still use 1151. So what that means is that if you've got a cooler which is designed for that previous gen 1151 then that will fit. Just be sure to double check with the cooling manufacturer if it is up to the job of handling Comet Lake CPUs. You should be able to get that info on their website. Now in terms of the power delivery, we have an 11 phase design which uses DigiPower and DRMOS. Around the board we have Nichicon 12k black caps and premium 60 amp chokes. So we're still getting some similar features to those higher end offerings. Covering the VRM we have two heat sinks which are independent of one another and in our web review we tested out the VRM cooling and Extreme 4 does a decent job in shifting those temperatures in this area. Behind the top heat sink we have the CPU power which is an 8 plus 4 pin socket which is quite common for Z490s and again like other boards we have solid pins for all the connectors which are stronger and have the potential there to carry heavier loads for this platform. Now, in terms of the head there are five in total, two up at the top for the CPU fan and then another three which can double up for either case fans or pumps. And for additional RGB we have four headers, two at the top and two at the bottom of the board, with two of those being addressable. Moving on to the memory, there are four slots here for dual channel DDR4, up to 128GB and up to 4266MHz. And right next to that DDR4 section we have the two USB 3.2 Gen 1 front panel headers, one of those providing support for Type-C. There is also another header 
at the bottom of the board. So that provides compatibility there for new and older cases. Moving on to the storage, we have six SATA 36G ports, any SATA based devices, four are right angled, and then another two which are top facing. And then we have two M.2 slots which utilize PCI Express Gen 3 X4. There is another M.2 in the center of the board there, but that is for Wi Fi. Now at the top, you'll see there are two M.2 slots. One of those supports Gen 3 and the other Gen 4. You can't use both of them at the same time. If we take a look at the expansion area, we have two PCI Express 3.0 X16s and three PCI Express 3.0 X1s. And the modes for the X16s are 16 and 4. Four. That top slot is the full 16 lanes from the CPU, so if you're going to be running a single GPU, we recommend going for that one. And if you use more than one card, that mode will drop to 4. Just AMD Crossfire is supported on this board, Nvidia SLI isn't. ASRock has given both full-size PCI Express the steel reinforcement for better longevity and an improved latch and extra anchor points. And as we mentioned previously, Extreme 4 has that hardware support for PCI Express 4. Immediately next to the PCI Express, we have the audio solution, which is based around the Realtek ALC1220 codec. And as part of the audio package, we get a handful of extra components, such as those high-end audio caps, separated left and right channels, and the isolated circuitry. Okay, and last of all, we come to the rear panel, which consists of the following features. Two USB 2 ports, PS2 keyboard and mouse, two antenna ports with the HDMI and the display port below, two USB 3.2 Gen 2, that comes in the form of a Type A and a Type C, a 2.5 gig LAN port, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and then the eight channel audio jacks with optical out. There aren't that many ports on this back panel. This is something you'll need to factor in if you're considering buying it. It's a shame that ASRock has wasted the space there on USB 2. And in fact, they could have used 3.2 instead. We are starting to see a number of brands now phasing out USB 2 as it just isn't needed. And another thing to point out is that this board doesn't come with any Wi-Fi. It has the M.2 socket and the antenna holes, but a module will need to be purchased separately if you wanna use such a feature. Alrighty, well that is the ASRock Z490 Extreme 4. This board here sits in the lower price bracket, but it isn't quite the cheapest option available. Personally, I do think it needs a slight price drop based on the features that you get and the fact that there is no Wi-Fi out of the box. But there are a lot of good things about this board if you're contemplating a move to this platform. It brings a mixture of USB 3.2 both in the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 forms. It has the three front panel headers for your case and if you're needing something which offers multiple M.2s, then it has a facility for that, and it caters for the 22110 form factor as well, which is starting to hit the mainstream. All of the M.2s have the heat sinks as well. As far as outright performance, Extreme 4 does a great job against the competition, notably in the VRM and chipset thermals. They are pretty good for a board of this caliber, and for overclocking, we managed to hit that 5.3 across all cores for the 10900K and required 1.35 volts. Again, that is a superb result for a board costing this much. If you guys want to see more performance from Extreme 4, be sure to check out that link, which will be on the screen and in the description very soon. And also let me know what you think of this board in the comments. Do you like the style? Do you like the features? Is it worth the money? Thanks for your continued support guys. Stay tuned for more content just like this. Take care and I'll see you guys next time.